Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the polymerase chain reaction step wise. So what are the main steps involved in PCR? So the first step would be initialization followed by denaturation and then followed by annealing. So let us first discuss the first three steps. So we will start with initialization. Now, initialization is a step which is not really required for all the DNAs. It is required only for those DNA polymerase that require heat activation. Now, please remember that it is not necessary for all of them. Only such DNAs where DNA polymerase need heat activation, only for them it is heated to a high temperature of 96 degrees Celsius for around 1 to 9 minutes. So for that much of time duration it is heated. <clears throat> now you will notice that in all the steps of PCR, one important thing is the temperature. The temperature varies with each stage of polymerase chain reaction. And that is very, very important. So this was about initialization which is not a mandatory step for all type of DNAs. Next is denaturation. So in denaturation what happens is the DNA is heated to disrupt the hydrogen bonds between the complementary strands of DNA. Now as we all know this is how the DNA structure looks like. So it is a double stranded structure and how are the two strands connected to each other? With the help of the hydrogen bonds which exist between the base pairs. Now what will happen if the hydrogen bond is broken? So if the hydrogen bond is broken, the two strands will separate. That's what will happen. And exactly that is what is done in denaturation. So it is heated such that the hydrogen bonds break and the two strands of the DNA separate out. So here you can see this was the double stranded DNA when heated, the two strands separate. And this is known as denaturation. <coughs> So here the DNA is heated to a temperature of around 98 degrees Celsius for around 30 seconds. Now this heating causes melting of the DNA as a result of which the strands separate. So this is also termed as DNA melting because when exposed to such a high temperature of around 98 degrees Celsius, the DNA melts and that is why the hydrogen bonds break and the two strands separate. Now the next step is annealing. So in annealing what happens is the primers are annealed to the single strands of DNA. Now you now have two single strands of DNA. So now what happens? The primers, that is that portion which are complementary to the existing strand, but it is just a small oligosaccharide, I mean oligonucleotide, that means small portion of a nucleotide. So here you can see this is the primer. So this red structure and this red structure, these are the primers. So the small set of primers they bind to their complementary part of the strand. Now as we know that the primers are always towards the 3' prime end. So if this is the 3' prime end of DNA, so the primers will attach to their complementary basis. So similarly here also the primer will attach to its complementary basis and this happens in annealing. Anneal means to join. Denaturation means to break something. So annealing means to join. So the primers will bind to the complementary part of the strand. Now in this step, during this step, the temperature is lowered. <clears throat> now to break something, you really need to increase the temperature so the bonds break. But when you want to join something, then the temperature is kind of lowered. So here, a perfect temperature needs to be maintained. Because if the temperature becomes very low or if it becomes very high, then perfect binding will not take place between the primer and the existing strand of DNA. So for perfect binding to take place, the temperature has to be optimum. And what is that correct temperature here? The temperature should be somewhere around 50 degree to 65 degree Celsius. It should not be very less, it should neither be too high. So th this is the main thing that happens during annealing. 
Now, once the primers are well bound to their complementary part of the existing DNA strand, then comes the role of DNA polymerase. So, the DNA polymerase will also bind to the primer template hybrid and there, from there on the process of new DNA strand formation will take place. So, the enzyme DNA polymerase will come and it will bind at this place where primer template hybrid is formed. That means wherever the primer and template is already formed, the DNA polymerase will come and it will also bind here and then it will start forming the new state, uh, new chain. New chain in the sense it will start adding nucleotides to the existing primer and that is how it will keep creating or keep synthesizing the new strand of DNA. So in annealing, the primers bind to the complementary part of DNA strand as I mentioned just now. And DNA polymerase also binds to this primer DNA hybrid. So primer template hybrid there, the DNA polymerase will also bind. So all sort of binding takes place here, whether the binding of the primers or the binding of the DNA polymerase. So now till here it is clear. Now comes the one of the most important step that is the step when the actual synthesis of the new strand takes place and that step is known as elongation. So in elongation what will happen this DNA polymerase will keep on adding new nucleotides to the existing primer. So this was the existing primer now when the DNA polymerase binds here now the DNA polymerase will keep on reading the existing DNA strand and accordingly it will keep synthesizing the new strand and the nucleotides will add up to form the polynucleotide or a new strand of DNA and that is how these two strands being complementary will form DNA. So that is how the new DNA will be synthesized. Now these nucleotides are added in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So if you see all the nucleotides will be added in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So as I have mentioned before that this primer always acts on the 3 prime end of the existing strand. So this is this will be your 5 prime and this will be your 3 prime. Again here this is your 3 prime, this is your 5 prime. So this is going to be 5 prime and this is 3 prime. So if you see here that the new nucleotides are being added from 5 prime to 3 prime. Here also new nucleotides are added from 5 prime to 3 prime. So the direction of the blue arrow shows the direction in which the new nucleotides are being added. And this addition of nucleotide states occurs due to DNA polymerase because DNA polymerase has this characteristic that it can read the existing nucleotides and it can add new nucleotides accordingly. Now for DNA polymerase to function again an optimum temperature is required. So it, the for activity of DNA polymerase is at its best at a temperature of around 75 degree to 80 degree Celsius. So this is the temperature when the activity of DNA polymerase is at its best. So <clears throat> here you can see that from one strand of DNA, so this was one DNA right this was just one DNA. So from one DNA at the end of these three steps denaturation, annealing and elongation you end up having two DNA. So this is one DNA and this is another DNA. So from one DNA you got two DNAs. Again from each of these DNAs you will get two DNA. Right? So if you see you started with one DNA and now you have four DNAs. Again from each of them you will have two DNAs each. So that will make up a total of eight DNAs and this process will continue. So it is something like you start with one DNA then you get two. Then again from each of them you get two. So you get four. Again from each of them you get two. So if you look at the pattern of this reaction what is happening? It is like a chain reaction. It is keep it will continuously keep on increasing so that is why it is known as a chain reaction and this chain reaction takes place with the help of the enzyme DNA polymerase that is why it is called polymerase chain reaction. So now this was about elongation and then comes the final step which is called the final hold. Now at final hold what happens is the temperature is considerably lowered a lot. So the temperature is quite low somewhere around 4 to 15 degrees Celsius. So it becomes that low. So at this temperature what happens is we want to check 
whatever is being generated. So here it is like a short term storage of the final product. So whatever uh, amount, number of, whatever number of copies of DNA we are able to form. So it is like a short term storage for that final product. Now, if we want to check the uh, polymerase chain reaction which is being generated then gel electrophoresis again can be performed in order to visualize it because again here also if you see from one copy of DNA we are creating multiple copies but they are not very clearly visible to us so if we really want to see them we can perform the same technique of gel electrophoresis to check for the sizes of the DNA which are being formed as a result of PCR. So this is how the entire process of polymerase chain reaction take place. So I hope the process is clear now. Now in case you have any doubts about how DNA replication take place, you can also refer the lesson on molecular basis of inheritance where we have actually spoken about the processes of DNA replication so that your basics are clear. Okay, so with this, uh, we understood that how amplification of the desired gene or the gene of interest is being done. So when we say amplification, we mean to say that multiple copies of the same gene is created. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.